Okay, now that I've finished off the project in just solid black and I cleaned it up and I have it floating on a white background, right? So it can be saved either as a PNG without a background or as a JPEG and a JPEG will automatically fill it in with the white background. And I've done that, I've saved it under file export as a JPEG. Let me show you what it would look like if I turned off the background and saved it as a PNG. Export PNG. See how the checkerboard's still there? That means PNGs allow transparencies, JPEGs do not. PhotoP always saves to your downloads folder, which is a bit of a pain. So then you have to navigate it into the folder you want to keep it permanently. So here's a PNG. PNGs tend to be a little bit larger than JPEGs. It's only 278 kilobytes, but that's because it's just solid black and empty. Whereas the JPEG version is only is almost half, right? 155 kilobytes. So JPEGs can be smaller, but notice how this has the white in it and the PNG is clear. It looks like it's gray behind it, but that's its default. So it's like a floating cutout. So depending on what you want to use it for. I'm asking you to save these as JPEGs so that when we post them, they have that clean white background anyway. And it's just a basic file format I want you to know. Okay, now because of that, I can now do some of the optional stuff. And for that, I chose this image from a 19th century cartoon. I'm blanking on the guy's name that does these, but wonderful cartoons, kind of political cartoons with uh, album covers from, from Tupac. That's not what this is, but you'll see them in my references. So I did a screen grab of a, of a collage of album covers by Tupac, which is where The Hate You Give gets its name for, th for Thug Life. And it's kind of a theme through the book. And then um, I'm going to composite these together and fill the image. So something nice about PhotoP, at least on a Mac, is instead of going to File, open in place like we've been doing, I can actually just drag and drop an image into the file. And that allows me to, it gives me an immediate uh, transform box where I can stretch it. And I want to treat this like wrapping paper. I just want to get more than I need and stretch it around. I'm not worried about the resolution getting soft because this is just a texture. Right? And you'll see that it's a smart object, so I need to convert it to, to rasterize it so that I can subtract away. Then I'm also going to do that with the album covers. Drag and drop them in. They come in as a new layer with a transform box that I can stretch and grow. And I'm not sure I'll like these grid lines, but we'll see. Now, how can I composite these two things together? Well, in, instead of just the cutouts of the lines, I can now play with opacity. So let me rasterize the album covers, but I can fade those out a little bit. Right? And I can also play with what's called blending modes. So we've done multiply before, which darkens, but I can also try some others. Some of my favorites are soft light, that will let selective lights come through. So you see, we see Tupac's eyes kind of showing through some of the images, customizes it. Pin light is one of my favorites. It really helps with the textures. So it prioritizes the album covers instead, you see, but the cartoon kind of comes through. But I think I like the cartoon a little bit more. Well, I'm not sure. I can try overlay. It's kind of half and half. What kind of wrapping paper do I want? 
Yeah. I think that kind of works. Let's try soft light again. Yeah, we'll keep it really subtle like that. So I have it at an opacity of 72 and at a soft light um, standard instead of a normal standard, right? So this allows a lot more to come through. Now I'm going to merge these two because this has the layer style change and the opacity change. The one underneath it is still normal at 100%, but together they make this image. So I'm going to hold down shift, select both of them, go to layer, and then merge those layers. And when I merge them, it will be a normal 100% combination of those effects. So this is the wrapping paper I want to use. Now, how do I cut this image out of this paper? Just like we did to erase the whites, I'm going to use the magic wand, select the empty space, have contiguous unchecked. So it's not just ones that are touching, but empty space everywhere. Then I'm going to say select inverse. So it's the opposite of that. So it's everything inside. And that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, because we're just dealing with black and white, which is very simple, I'll deselect, is I can just click on the magic wand and click on the black pixels. Right. And then I go to this layer. You see how the, the selection travels with me. And now I'm going to duplicate, not cut away, but duplicate. And to do that, I hit Command-J, or I can go to Layer, Duplicate. Oh, that doesn't work. Command-J will work, though, or it always has in my experience. There we go. So Command-J is a little bit different than the Layer, Duplicate layer. And it will look like that. How is it different? Command-J will du duplicate a full layer. But if you have a selection within that layer, it will only duplicate the selection. Think of it like a cookie cutter tool. Super helpful. Gives you a really, really nice, clean selection, perfectly placed. The only complaint is just like when we filled in with solid black pixels, we don't get a softening of the edges. So I'm going to show you how we can fix that. What we do is on our cutout, right, which is sitting right on top of our black. You can see the black edges underneath. We can actually select all of this white space with our magic wand, and then we can click on the selection option that's called Refine Edge. And Refine Edge will show us Actually, I don't want to get into this yet. This is too much. It will isolate the edge for us, and then we can subtract that away. You see how this is now a new layer? But let's not refine the edge. Instead, we're going to select the empty space, the white space, and, and notice that next to refine edge, there's a feather. We're going to feather it a little bit, just a couple pixels. So I'm going to put in two pixels for the feather. And then I'm going to select it again. And the difference between selecting with a feather and without is that now, when I delete out that empty space, it will soften the edge. And I can hit multiple times, and it will keep softening it slightly. It feathers in. And I can choose whether I want the black edges to show or not or if I want the black edges to show but at a lower opacity or not. So lots we can play with. Different principles. Need to zoom in on my tools a little bit and then zoom out on it. Now, what else can I do? Well, we talked about uh, layer or blending modes, that's what these are, of different layers. We can also talk about layer styles. So if we double click, let me deselect, get rid of those marching ants. If we deselect, 
we can double click on the layer and it opens up a layer styles menu. And we're going to get into this very heavily with our next exercise. But for now, I'm just going to try a drop shadow behind it. And then I can set my drop shadow settings by clicking on it and adjusting how dark it is with the opacity on multiply. I can change its size. I can change the angle of the light. I can change the distance. Make it a little bit shorter. I just want this to be more subtle. And then maybe spread it, soften it a little. And just because it's browser based, layer styles are tons of fun, but they can take a little bit what little bit of time to preview within the browser. Because they're kind of processing heavy. Okay, but that looks good. So I hit OK. And what I love about layer styles is they're, they are added on top of the, the pixels. So you can always turn them off or on using a little drop down menu. So they're layer effects. So that's without it, this, that's with it. And then I decide you know, what to add, what to leave away, maybe take this down even more. And I like that. So now, this is the one I'm going to save as a PSD. It's got all the options for the solid black and for this uh, optional textured colored version. That in some way relates to the content, right? The cartoon of the riot and all the Tupac albums. And then I want to save it to post it. So I'm going to export it as a JPEG. And then, just because I might as well, I'm going to turn off that white background, have it floating, and I'm going to export it as a PNG. So it's like a cutout sticker. And we'll all have the name that I gave it originally. And then I want to move all those from my downloads folder into. my exercise one folder. I'll color code them. This is the one I'm actually posting, but this PNG is kind of an extra. I'll show you something fun we can do with that. I'll replace the older ones. And now I'm gonna upload that as an improvement to my assignment. So how do I do that? I click on the little gray dots and I say edit. And I go underneath my original. And I use the same upload image tool. And then drag and drop the JPEG in. And then shrink it a little bit just to fit nicely in the window for critique. You need to shrink your work enough, and I can always do it for you if necessary, so that when we're doing the presentation critiques, you can see the image on the screen of your device, at least that I can see it on the, on the screen. Right. Okay, so it is 11 o'clock. We're gonna start our presentation critique. It's okay if your work has not um, been uploaded yet. We can still do a presentation critique in class. The deadline for the projects is always midnight of the, um, or right before midnight, 11.59 on the day it's due. So as long as you post something before the deadline, even if it's still in progress, then you can get credit for that project and you can always improve it later and get a, a new score, an updated score. Okay, that's that.